so grateful to be here. Hello, my name is Mamuda, but my friends call me Ruth, and I'm from Bath in the UK. On Monday, the 11th of December, 2006, I had the worst day of my life, and that was the first of many. My husband, who was the love of my life, the father of our four young children, was killed in a tragic car accident. This scarred myself and all four of my children for life. Yeah, he went to work in the morning, as he always does on a Monday morning, but that was the last time we saw him alive. But one thing I always tell my son is that daddy spent an extra half an hour with him that morning while I took the girls to school. It was raining heavily and he didn't want to wake up, so daddy looked after him. My husband was a huge strapping young man and he was six foot two and he towered above me, but he was quiet and shy, the very opposite of me until you got to know him, then he had a very dark humour. He was a gentle giant, a wonderful husband and a wonderful father and my best friend. Grief is something we all go through at some point in our lives, but it's something we don't talk about. It's a taboo subject. If we don't talk about it, then we can pretend we're not hurting. But for me, that doesn't work. I want to talk about my grief. I want to talk about my husband because the pain I feel is a testimony of the love for him I still have. When someone we know is hit with grief, sometimes we don't know what to say, so we say nothing. But it's not what you say, it's about letting them know that you're standing next to them, so if they fall, you will help them and you will pick them up. And I'm so, so grateful for all those who did exactly that for me. One friend in particular, Sally, she would come and sit with me in the middle of the night while I sobbed until I, I was too tired to cry anymore. That fateful day could have been the beginning of the end. I will admit that the first two and a half years is a bit of a blur. And it was a case of putting one foot in front of the next to keep moving forward. But for me, it's important to bring my children up with happiness and with laughter and in their lives that have a kindness and a generosity for others. They were, and we are still are blessed in so many other ways. And after the death of a loved one, we can sometimes withdraw into ourselves and become someone we don't even like and might not find a way out of that box. I didn't want that for my children. As a Muslim, the very first Ramadan, I sat in front of the TV with my children and watched the Islamic channels and the charity shows. And I asked them, who do you want to donate to? Who do you want to make a difference to? And I made them phone in the studio lands and ask for prayers for their dad as they donated. And this gave me a peace and a comfort that I still feel every Ramadan. On the very first death anniversary, I couldn't bear the thought of being at home, reliving the moment when the police came to the door. So we went to Bangladesh, where we physically were able to help less fortunate people and asking them to pray for my late husband and to always remember him. Every act of charity brought peace to me, but the grief never goes away. I'm a very proud mother and I have four beautiful children who are loving, kind, but the grief never goes away. And I'm sure you've heard of the saying, mad with grief. I know exactly what that means now. I would hear my husband's voice or laugh and we would, he would argue with me for crying. And I was thinking I was completely going mad because I could hear him talking to me, even though I know he was gone. And the grief never goes away. They say time is a healer. Well, it's not. The grief hasn't gone. You just learn how to accept it and to hide it better. 14 years on and the grief still hasn't gone away. But we are women and we're strong and we're leaders and nurturers. We find a way, whatever normality is, we find a way back to it. For normality for me is crying when I need to let the emotions out. And that's okay, it's not a weakness. Hugging my children, loving them with every ounce of my being. Sleeping for only three hours a night, if I'm lucky. But talking about my husband, keeping his memory alive, not just for myself, but also for my children. He was and always will be the love of my life. Why do I say I'm blessed? I had 19 years of my love, 15 as his wife. So many people have fraction of that love and 
all the time in the world. We had quality, even if we didn't have quantity. We were told it was highly unlikely we would ever have children. And yet, by the grace of God, I have three beautiful daughters and a handsome young son. We have a home, we have warmth, food and security. So yes, we are blessed because there, but for the grace of God, go I. The only thing my husband wanted to do, which he was unable to get round to, was to take my children to Disney World in Florida. And I've done that a few times actually. And throughout the times we have been there, we have felt his presence. The first time we did a manatee river cruise and they are known as the sea cows. And on the cruise, we were also told they were the gentle giants of the sea. The children and I just looked at each other and we all thought the same thing. It was a sign he was watching over us. That is one of many holidays I've taken the children on. I found traveling to be exactly what I need for our emotional well-being. Seeing the children have fun, laugh and experience life was definitely a form of healing for me as well as for them. Holidays give you a chance to relax and to de-stress and to reconnect with yourself as well as with your loved ones. I've taken the kids on a Mediterranean cruise, a three week tour of Australia, to Hawaii, to Turkey, just to name a few. And we always visit historic and cultural sites wherever we go. My husband would have been so happy with that. He would have loved it. So for me, it's a way of honoring his memory and by living this life that he didn't get a chance to live. It's hard for me to see and share the fun that he's not enjoying and the grief never goes away. But however, you have one life and I wanted the children to know that life goes on despite the heartache and there's a whole future for them to look forward to. And in 2018, I was introduced to an exclusive travel company and it has changed my life. One of the hobbies I do is making jewellery, um, which is why I called my business Moose Jewels on the Beach. I like a bit of bling. Um, and I genuinely feel happy. Normally between October and April, I would have struggled because it's all our birthdays, death anniversary, and I'm normally paralysed with grief. But since I've joined this company, I haven't felt that way. I have days and moments when I can't stop crying and the heartache is unbearable, but it's no longer paralyzing me from months on end. And it's not just a business. I love the fact that I can help other people travel for less money. I love the fact that I'm saving money on my holidays and it's a way of traveling and seeing more of the world. But more than that, it's a community we have. It's not just business partners, we're a family and we support each other through all the hard times and the dark times. We are team Dragonfly Voyages. And that's what grief, emotional, mental health all needs, a, a support system of friends and family who don't ask you if you're okay. They just hug you until you are, even if it's a virtual hug. Hopefully when I do a workshop, it'll be a more about the emotional side of traveling. And as I've said before, we have one life and we need to live it and to love and to laugh. And we need to find that one thing that makes us happy. That doesn't mean that I've forgotten my husband. It doesn't mean that I have no worries about anything else. It just means I'm living my life and doing the things that he didn't get a chance to do. And I'm celebrating my life by honoring him. And making my children happy was a priority, but that was for them, not for me. And as they grow up and leave the nest, I'm going to be on my own, so I need something for myself as well now. During lockdown, my oldest daughter got married and the smile on her face made everything worthwhile. And I dreamt of my husband that night. He was so happy. A perfect day and the perfect ending. I expect to feel upset when life is hard and to miss him more than, but on happy occasions, it brings back with a vengeance that the fact he isn't here with us not here to celebrate with us, but I know he'd be proud of our children. Grief can turn your world upside down, crush your very soul if you let it. And it's taken me a long, long time to get to a place where I feel happy. There is no time limit on how long grief lasts. And for me personally, I believe it'll always be there, hovering in the background. 
but at least it's not crippling me anymore. Even with our own grief and heartache, I still found time to help others, to help them when they needed. Kindness was something that was instilled in me by my parents. And I'm grateful for that, to have this compassion for others. I hope I've taught my children to do the same. Whatever we're doing, there's always someone out there who's probably worse off than you are in a worse situation. And we need to be grateful for every blessing showered on us. And as Tennyson said, it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. And as I have already said, we are strong women and we have a responsibility to the next generation as nurturers to teach them to be strong and independent, but kind and caring. And as part of my business, I love the fact I can help families fulfill the long life dreams of holidays, making memories of their loved ones. It's so important. I was in a situation where I was fortunate enough to be financially stable, but it felt like blood money. And I struggled with the reasons why I had that money. The continued donations over the years have helped me to come to terms with that. But I'm grateful that I was able to use the money for the amazing holidays we have had and the experiences my children have grown up with. But I'm aware most people won't have that financial backing. But if I can help them save money and still have those experiences and make lifelong memories, it is a gift that is helping me as well as I help them. Life is short. We don't know what is around the corner. That morning, I was a happy and very content wife with a wonderful family life. Everything changed in a matter of minutes and I'll never be the same person again. I'm a version of me that is still kind and caring. I am forever grateful that I didn't become a person that I don't recognize or even like. And that could have happened so, so easily if I'd allowed hatred for the other driver to seep into my heart. We all have a choice to make on a daily basis. We can decide to get up and make the best of the cards we've been dealt, or we can blame the cards and let life pass us by. But that choice isn't always easy to make. We need help and support sometimes, and that's okay. Sometimes we need to let the grief engulf us and cry, and that's okay. And then there'll be days when the sun shines and we feel all is right in the world, and that's okay. However we feel when we wake up, knowing we are not alone is important. There is always someone who will help, whether it's family, friends, or a professional. We don't have to face this world alone. And what time is at the moment with the situation we're in, we don't want to talk about the virus here, but some of us will feel more isolated than others but that's what I wanted to emphasize. We're not alone. If you think there is somebody out there that needs your help, needs support, be that person to give the helping hand. And as Muslims, my parents taught me that whenever you give in kindness, you will have it returned in multitude by the grace of God. And as women, as human beings, we need to support each other and lift each other up. And as we lift each other up, we will be lifted. So even a smile can make someone's day. Grief has made me the person I am today. And as a widow, as a mother, as a daughter, as a friend, and as a businesswoman, I'm always going to be doing my very best to be the person I am needed to be. I'm surrounded by positive people and I can never tell those who have been there for me how much I appreciate their care for me, but I can pay it forward and the grief never goes away. But you are not alone. Celebrate life and allow yourselves to live, love and laugh. Thank you.